Faith Church, Merry Christmas to you. I um, hope and trust that you are gathered today with people that you love and uh, celebrating the one of the greatest events in human history, the birth of God coming in flesh to become one of us. I'm so good to, to be gathered all through Advent up to Christmas Eve, and now we're here, it's Christmas Day. And as I, I hope you know, today begins Christmas, actually. We've been in Advent until today, and now today, up the next 12 days, we get to continue to celebrate. As the rest of the world moves on and thinks about New Year, the church takes uh, these couple weeks to each day to reflect on uh, what it has meant, what it means to us now that Christ has come into our world. If you have been uh, reading through Matthew this Advent, uh, I know many of you have. It's been a really profound experience for me again. Um, if you do the reading today, it may seem a bit odd to you. It's Matthew chapter 27, and it's, it's the record of Jesus' crucifixion and death. And at first glance, maybe that seems odd to you. It's Christmas. We should be thinking about Luke chapter 2, about Jesus' birth. And yet here we are thinking about Jesus' death. Um, it's actually really fitting that we do so. Uh, because apart from the crucifixion, apart from the resurrection, which we'll read tomorrow, the incarnation of God, the birth of Christ into our world, makes very little sense. If you think about it, if, if God became one of us simply to experience human life, I mean, that would be worth something. But as Jesus entered into human flesh, he experienced all the joys and sufferings of human life. And to have our creator know what it's like in, in, a, in a personal experience, to know what it's like to be a human being is, is of some value. But Christ did not just come to to relate to us. He came to die for us and to rise for us, and not just to know our suffering and uh, our temptation and ultimately our death, but to undo it. And so it is always really good that we see the cross there in the manger, that we see the crucifixion and the resurrection tied so intimately to the incarnation to God coming to be with us in Christ. And so today's reading is really fitting that we would reflect that this child that was born uh, was born to die. That that was the, God sent his son into the world to, to give his life so that those who would trust him would come into, into salvation. Um, we celebrate this and we give thanks to God that he would do this, and I would not do this for you. You would not do this for me. No, no one would do this to, to come and to send their own son for this purpose, and yet, because of God's exceedingly great love for us, he, he does so. Um, and so as you reflect today on Christmas, also Christ's birth, also reflect today on, on Easter. Uh, in fact, Christmas is the beginning of the Christian year, Advent and Christmas, and we move now through Christmas towards ultimately Lent and Easter and the celebration of Christ's death and resurrection. Um, we serve a God who has done far more than us than we could ever ask or imagine and continues to do so. Um, I am exceedingly grateful to be a part of this community, to have celebrated with you this season and look forward to continuing to celebrate with you. We will gather uh, tomorrow, Sunday, the, the for the first Sunday of Christmas and worship together, just like always, nine o'clock, 11 o'clock. And Ron Beams, I know has been working hard to prepare a message. He's gonna, gonna teach us from the story of the Magi who come and bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh to Jesus. This is such a powerful story. And I know Ron has some great insights for us from that. So I hope you'll be here with us. Uh, it's, 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 it'll be good to continue to celebrate um, Christ's birth. Wherever you are today, um, may you know the love of God as your Father, the grace and peace of Christ, who is his Son, and the fellowship of the Spirit. And of course, Merry Christmas.